Right here on the Meat Speak Podcast, powered by the certified Angus Beef brand, Brian Schaff, Paige Clayton, the social media guru, coming to you from inside one of our favorite places on the planet. It's it's heaven with empanadas uh, on the west side of Miami, out in, this is technically Kendall West, right? Yes, it is. Yes. We're here. We just actually had a delightful skirt steak with Chimmy. That was amazing. That said, let's go ahead and get into the meat of it all. Our guest today has a growing reputation for excellence among the titans of the South Florida culinary scene from her meat shop and restaurant mashup west of Miami, where she spins beefy goodness into gold in the theme of her Italian and Argentinian roots. She's been recognized on two continents for her open fire cooking exploits and is the reigning chef of the year from the certified Angus beef brand. A little something that we're kind of biased towards. Please welcome to the podcast, chef, butcher, empanada maker to the stars, the great Carla Di Lorenzo. How are you? Hey, Ryan, who are you? I just ate one of your steaks and uh, I mean... I don't know that my day is going to, it's kind of sad because, you know, it's, it's about one o'clock in the afternoon right now. And when you, I mean, that's probably about as good as the day is going to get. So it's all, it can only be downhill from here, right? And of course, if, what steak did you eat, Brian? I had the skirt steak. And if it's not certified Angus beef, it's not what? Paige? The best. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> che- checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. not even prepared for that. <laughs> so we are inside Los Tanitos, yes. right? And, uh... Can you give us a, a just a lay of the land in terms of of what do, what can people expect here? Because this is not your traditional restaurant. It's not your traditional meat shop. But whatever it is, it's <laughs> beautiful and it's magical. Thank you, Brian. I always like to um, let my uh, customers know that I want them. I want them to feel like they're in a little bit of Argentina when they walk in. I want them to feel like they're in their country. Um, as well as uh, customers who walk in when they see sort of fighting as beef, they you know immediately know it's a representation of the United States. So that's what I love. I love to represent both um, both countries, and um, with the meat, I can actually do that. I represent the United States with certifying as beef, and the cuts that I work um, with uh, certifying as beef are Argentine cuts. So that's that's what I like to you know let myself be known by that. I love both my cultures. I love. You know my background, and 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 I love helping the community, and anything the community asks for or wants, that's what I'm here for. Excellent. You know, tell us about the the restaurant a little bit because you guys have been you've been here at this location uh, for quite a while, but I mean it's a long history, even beyond how long you've been in this this actual building, right? Yes, correct. We've been here. It's going to be ten years. Um, and in April, we turned 10 years, a decade, so you can imagine. And prior uh, to Los Tanitos, we had Chetano, which was not a restaurant. It was a meat market and a deli bakery. And uh, we were there for 20 years prior. So we've been doing this now. It's going to be 30 years that we've been, you know, in this business. And, um, and 10 of them with the restaurant. So I always like to say that having the restaurant was my playground. My playground to invent, my playground to you know, go further with the product. And, and that's exactly what we did. And, you know, I, I absolutely use the product and the brand in all, my entire menu. So. And we appreciate it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And likewise, again, it's, it's, a, it's a full circle, Ryan. You guys, it's, it's like I always say, you guys are family. So definitely I use the brand, but the brand gives back. It's an insurance policy inside my display case. So that's, that's my number one um, thing that I stand by my customers have never returned a piece of meat and told me you know oh my god this was hard this was no never I can't say that excellent you know tell us a little bit about the Argentinian roots and beef right I mean the two go hand in hand you know you look at things like arachara and picanha <laughs> and you know, vacio and uh, there was another one in the case that I, I wasn't quite sure of <laughs> that's the one I don't even I can't even pronounce that but talk to us about the um, give us a, a snapshot of what is that Argentinian open fire meat, like, I guess, I guess, how does that weave into the culture so much? I mean, how does that differ from, you know, you're in America where people fire up the Weber in the backyard with charcoals and, and, and grill? It's, it's, again, it's a cultural thing. It's how we've been raised. We don't, you know, they never tell us where, the way I was raised is always open fire cooking, like you say. So I think it's a, it's a cultural um, thing that I follow. 
they always ask me, do you use gas? Do you use charcoal? What do you use wood? And I always like to say, um, because in the United States we have such permits, I have to use gas in the restaurant. But in my house, I like to use charcoal. I like to use wood. I like to experiment, you know, with different heats, with different fires, different techniques. So I think that 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 cultural side is what's in me and makes me want to go home and light that fire and and try something new because again although i'm from there i'm here i'm in the united states i don't have their cuts of meat that they have over there i don't have certain techniques that they could have over there and i try to let's say impersonate it the most i can with what i have so again it's i i think it's like it's what you said it's a cultural thing it's something we were brought up every sunday it's a family thing it's a you know lighting the grill is union we like to we like to say that it brings you know the family together you know because you know gas you just light it on throw the meat it's over you know over here the the whole ritual of you know lighting the fire waiting for it putting the charcoal you know bringing out the sausages first while you wait for the meat to cook it's it's a ritual it's a it's something that you know bonds us and brings us together and that's where you chat about life and you you know it's to me it's a life yeah. it's 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 family yeah I, I always bring it down to that i think chris Lilly had said on the podcast a, a a while back that barbecue is it's not about the actual thing that you eat it's about who you're with and what you're talking about during the process right it's the, correct yeah so really no matter kind of where you're at in the world i mean these are common themes that's that's my point no matter where like when i went to colombia we we share it's a passion you share and you get to do together and there's no rule there's no right there's no wrong it's and uh, it's a brand new experience every single time and and plus when you have like for example if i have guests or somebody who wants to cook with me i absolutely love that you you learn each other's techniques each other's secrets you know like it's 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 a family it's it really really is and 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 it's a certain passion that when you find someone else that has it, it's it's a big passion. It's really, really, like, it's worldwide. Yeah. It's something that whether you're in Japan, like we were saying, Japan, Australia, Mexico, Colombia, <laughs> it's fire. Yeah. It's, it's what started life. So <laughs> <laughs> we all share that in common. And, you know, it's, it's, it's an element we all have that if you take advantage of it and use it, look at, look at all the beautiful things you can do with it. Yeah. Amen. You know, like that's, it's a, a union. Yeah. You know, tell us a, a bit about your background. Was this always in the cards for you? Like, did you grow up thinking, I'm going to run a restaurant and be a, not just be a butcher, be a female butcher, which, you know, of course, you know, certifying as beef, Diana Clark, you know, co-host, right? We, we're, we're prone to female butchers, but you don't see them very often. Um, tell us a bit about you and how you got to be where you're at. So... Well, we've been doing this our whole life, right? And behind the scenes, I've always been behind with my father, with my brother. I've always been part of this, right? And then all of a sudden, um, I would always be front of house mo more than anything. You know, always had my chefs, always controlled everything, but never, you know, had the kitchen myself. Um, chef decided to quit. And I was like, you know what? This is it. I, like, I'm going to try the kitchen. I want to try something new. I don't want to do front of house wanted to try something new and once I went back there and I tried that I was like oh my god again I would do it every day at home you know I'd cook at home I'd grill at home but I never like that passion didn't ignite until it was something I had to do you know like like okay you have to do this to survive Carla so you better get back there and you know figure this out because your whole family depends on this so that and that um, feedback from customers like what did you do with your empanadas your empanadas are, are and I'm like oh you like my empanadas because that's the thing my my chef left no recipe no anything I had to start from scratch yeah. I had to imagine what it was like and start from scratch and yeah. and that's how it happened and I'm like oh my god okay so since I'm starting from scratch I'm gonna better this and I'm gonna better that one and I'm gonna and that's exactly what I started to do and then create new flavors since I was back there it really did um, open up like I said like a playground and I was like a kid and it opened up my brain to realize holy this is what <laughs> you really like like you know I really loved the restaurant being front of house managing it it was always you know it's in me mm -hmm. you know to, it's a family business you know I was <clears throat> never gonna let them down but the kitchen was when I was like 
And then when I started cutting meat and started cutting for the kitchen, I was like, and you know, I mean, I always cut meat with my father throughout the years, but never really went full, full in where I wanted to not only cut, but create with my cuts. And, and that's how, I mean, that's little by little and day by day with between the kitchen, between my father, between my brother, between grilling at home, between filming it and putting into the world, which that's what, that was another one in 2008. And I'm like, why am I not showing the world what I can do? And I opened up the Instagram account and I started showing the world my talent. And that's exactly how it all started. That's, that's a secret. That's amazing. You know, you, you went there. I was going to wait to bridge the subject, but you went there. We got to talk about empanadas, right? Okay. You talked about the formation of them. You know, you'd mentioned before we even sat down here that, that you don't necessarily love the baking element of things, but your dough is <laughs> silly good on those. How, walk us through. I mean, you, to, you told us kind of the process about that, but, man, what, what do you do? That's, it's magic. Um, well, here's, here's another trick. My dough, okay, I have, Miami's very high, high paced, you know, everybody's in a rush. Nobody, nobody's got time. So my empanadas, they want them warmed up and they, they don't want to wait for a toaster oven for an empanada to be warmed up. I had to work on my dough and work on it that when you happen to warm it up in a microwave, it does not get soggy. The dough remains, you know, like, like if you would have warmed it up in a toaster oven. So a lot of work, a lot of practice, <laughs> a lot of mess ups, but that's it. We, you know, after probably a year of trying and trying and trying to nail different doughs, um, I made my own dough at, at the culinary center one time. And I, and I mean, for being that I made it really quick, I had only two hours to make it. We, we did it. Yeah. We did it. So again, whatever you put your mind and your heart to it, you know, you should be able to passion passion yeah. makes it happen so well these so yeah. empanadas are now famous among <laughs> i think every single staff member at certified angus beef like it's a constant constant conversation point everybody wants to know when we're having carla's empanadas again i was most excited about this trip to come and have an empanada <laughs> in your store thank you Paige, and that's a dream come true for me to hear that honest to god because that's a bucket list check yeah <laughs> Yeah, an empanada at Los Sanitos, check. I can move on. <laughs> well, and, you know, it's not only, you know, folks that we work with, but there are chefs down here in Miami who have participated in your empanadas who use your dough, right? Yes, exactly. Chef uh, Sydney Hudson, she uh, comes here about once a month and purchases cases of dough, and, and all the empanadas that are used at uh, Tropical Cerveceria are with my dough. That's awesome. Which, by the way... Paige and I are down here for a few days. That is on our uh, list tomorrow night. We're, yeah. we're going to, so Cindy, if you're listening, well, by the time you hear this, we'll have been there, but we're coming to see you, <laughs> and we're coming hungry. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, but you talk for me, please, to Cindy. You got it. You got it. <laughs> you know, but, but as far as the, uh, the inside of the empanadas, right, I mean, you, you, you'd mentioned it. You can just kind of make up what you put in them, right? What, what, what are the ones that, that people... Uh, I guess gravitate the most towards. Oh, a hundred percent. Our bestseller is our certified Angus beef ground beef empanada. That's number one. It's what hits uh, home. I'd say everyone who has it feels like mom or grandmother made it, and that's my objective to feel, make you feel at home. Yeah. And my empanadas make that like, not to toot my own horn, but this is because of customers' feedback. They tell me that's exactly how they feel. They feel like mom or grandma made it. And that, to me, again, another bucket list, mission complete, means I, if I can nail mom or grandma's recipe, like, come on. If I can hit center right to the heart, that's number one. Yeah. yeah. Number I mean, one. They always say the best way to people's heart is through their stomach. But honestly, that it's so true. I mean, you think about all the, the Christmas dinners, the family dinners, the Sundays with your family, the, the restaurant that you went out to, the place you had your wedding. I mean, all of those different elements involve food. And it evokes an emotion in them that it's it's almost like irreplaceable and cannot be recreated unless you happen to have the exact same bite again. And then even then, it's not not quite there, but that's okay. You're willing to to let the emotion be what it is. With that said, empanadas is one of the main reasons we survived the pandemic. Also, yeah, because um, again, people couldn't get together, people couldn't go out to restaurants, they could Uber, they could, and you have a home. Again, you hit home with just an empanada and people would love that mm -hmm. you know it was one of our main main sellers when it came 
you know, yeah. to the lockdown I, when no one could sit down at the restaurant and have an entire meal, an empanada would save the day. Yeah. So it, they really did, um, they're lifesavers. They really are. I always tell everybody they're the perfect snack, the perfect dinner, breakfast, lunch, you know, whatever. K kids pack a couple of her kids for lunch and you're set. You know, yeah. like it's, and especially to those who are always fast paced, you pack a couple yeah. and you're done. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's, it's funny how often the empanadas have come up on this podcast. If you go back to season one, there is a, uh, there's an episode called School Food Rocks with our buddy Joe Urban, who actually runs the <clears throat> food program for its Greenville County Schools. And you met him, and he used your empanada recipe, and he fed the students in his district your empanadas all the way up in South Carolina. That's got to make you feel all warm and oh fuzzy, doesn't it? Oh, my God. You can imagine, Brian, my first trip up there, I meet Joe. He asks me for my recipe the first time ever in 50 years that I share my recipe. And for such a good cause, when he, when I saw what he had done with my recipe, Brian, I was crying because I just could not believe that one simple recipe impacted so many people. You know, like, it's like, wow, that was, uh, you know, I'll forever have Joe in my heart for that one because that was incredible, incredible. And again, that's what I always mention, like the culinary center and the connections and the people we meet. It's like you become family. Yeah. We're all, it's a, it's, it's a family. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, you travel a fair bit uh, when, when you can, right? <laughs> Obviously, I mean, it's you've got, I guess, a, a, a business to run, right? <laughs> but, I mean, talk about the things that you do. I mean, you know, you go to Colombia, you're cooking on, on, you know, different continents, things like that. You're in demand. Yeah, dream come true. Um, I actually was, speaking of, well, I went to Colombia to cook with Tulio and with Efrain, mm -hmm. which, again, amazing. Again, certified Angus Beef united us, so that's a, a dream come true. I mean, I was in Medellin cooking in the mountains, like dream come true, dream come true. Um, I went to Chile also and competed and uh, judged in Chile. Um, I became part of an international group of grillers uh, where they're everywhere from Mexico, Chile, Brazil, all around the world. Um, and right now I was just invited. So this is a surprise. I was just invited to the um, what is it called? A, uh, the, it's in Spanish, though. It's yeah. El Mundial de Asados, which is the World Cup of barbecues in Belgium. Whoa! Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. It's a world, it's a, a nation, you know, worldwide yeah. from competing all over the world for the, it's a World Cup of grillers. See, so the Lionel Messi of, exactly. of, of, yeah, of grilling. Exactly, exactly, and that, and we're going to the World Cup with a team, my international team, and they called me to see if I wanted to be part of the first international team, because usually every team is, you know, all from Argentina, all from Chile, we're the first international team, so the United States kicks in with me. No so kidding. I'd be representing the United States in this case, not Argentina. So I'm so happy to be able to represent, yeah. again, both countries. So in this case, I'm going in from the United States. That is that is so awesome. You know, talk, talk to us about Los Tanitos, and you have the moniker behind you, Che Tanita. Yes. Right? <clears throat> Explain, what, like, what, what are the origins of that? What does that mean, I guess? You know, because I, I know, like, there's a lot of thought that goes into these things. Yes. Yeah, so my father's Italian, and my mother's Argentinian. My father migrated from Italy to Argentina, where he met my mother. In Argentina, um, we slang word for Italian people is Tano, right? El Tano. So my father was El Tano, and slang word for women is Che, or la, la Che. So my mom was La Che, my dad was El Tano. And that's where we, when they came here to the United States, they opened up the meat market 30 years ago called Che Tano. Being, you know, half my mother, half my father, you know, the business. And then uh, 20 years later, my brother and I decided to move 10 years ago over here. And, you know, although my, bro my father is still cutting, my father and my mother toned it down a little bit they don't you know t we took over and that's why we're los tanitos because we'd be the kids the son of el tano we're los tanitos so that's where my brother and i kick in yeah. to the next generation and that's why we're los tanitos by chetano <laughs> that's that's awesome that's I feel, I feel like Chris Farley. That's awesome, right? <laughs> I love the. Um, I always admire the the brand that you've built behind Chetanita and mm -hmm. and the Instagram. I mean, when I first started working for Certified Angus Beef, I still do now, thankfully. But I was working in um, really, really diving into the Instagram world and working with some of our restaurant partners and kind of just like 
diving in. Um, I mean, I didn't have a beef background. I didn't really have a restaurant background. It was kind of my homework. Um, and I started with some of our, our, our brand fans, you know, our brand family. Um, and you were on that list. I remember going to my boss and being like, have you seen this girl's Instagram? Like, she is doing some really cool stuff. Seeing photos of you holding, like, two tomahawks across your chest, I was like, go, girlfriend. Like, <laughs> girl power, you got this. And the stories that you tell across your social media platforms are just, like, awesome and, like, really in-depth and always so positively put, even, you know, during the pandemic when things were not positively put. Like, your spin is just... Awesome. I just love seeing like positive forces like that in social media because unfortunately these days we can get into the negative space so, so quickly. Um, but no, just awesome. I, like, I always admired your storytelling. Thank you, Paige. Not to mention the first time you wrote back <laughs> on social media, I was like, oh, finally Whoa! got the confidence <laughs> to, to send a DM to Carla. And I was like, hi. This and I was Paige. like, oh my God. Oh my God. She's writing to me. I was so excited to find it. Not to mention when I met you to put a face behind you. Oh my I was gosh, like, yeah. I was so excited and yep. so happy. And, and thank you for recognizing what we do. Of course. Yeah. And, and luckily, you know, and, and with everything, I do have a team and I don't only do this by myself. Right. You know, I have, you know, I have, I, I always call her my angel because she is her, I, her name is Marilyn. She handles my Instagram with me. Yeah. And if it weren't for her, I mean, what you're saying, aside from my pictures and everything, what you're saying, the content, the captions and everything, I mean, it's, okay, again, I can't be, I, in everything I try to but again that's why you have help you have a team oh, absolutely. and I am so grateful to have her yeah so grateful to have her because as you can see she's doing a really good job yeah yeah so and 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 that's what I mean like we're all a family and 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 that's another thing that I'm grateful for my team hella team aside from my family my brother my mother you know my father um, I have them I have them I have you guys and and there's and I've never felt neg what you just said the negativity yeah. I've never felt that I always get asked you know being a female butcher how do you do you get anything because you're a female on the contrary like I on the contrary I get even more like they're like wow and what what made you get into this and how and you know and and getting and seeing that again that enthusiasm in the customer when they realize that you do know your stuff you're not just saying you know yeah. you do know your stuff or when they're looking for a cut and when they're looking for something and you actually know what they're talking about that's that's why we do it yeah that's why we do it so i mean again it's you there, no one no one is alone in this world anyone who says they're doing it by themselves not true yeah not true so that's <clears throat> that's a it's always a team a team a family and and again, I'm so grateful for all of my surroundings because I wouldn't be who I am if it weren't for my surroundings. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. All right. I, I would be remiss if we didn't talk about it. So obviously you can you can come in here and you can get a fantastic steak. And I, I say that because I've just eaten one. <laughs> <laughs> also, you know, empanadas, there's a bakery, right? But behind me is a meat case, right? So you're also kind of a meat market as well. Yes. And I'm not joking. It's the most impressive damn meat case i think i've ever seen i'm i'm not kidding there are three whole french tomahawks right that are vac sealed that are actually sitting on top of an entire rib section right that's like the entire rib with the tomahawk bones sticking out that have been french it just hasn't been cut into steaks yet i mean it's it's beautiful right this is this is amazing. You have other people like seeking you out, or you have lots of people seeking you out just for this meat case. Whether they come in here and order a steak to eat or not, I mean, you've got a reputation for this, right? Oh, yeah. Remember how I told you the empanadas made me survive the pandemic? Yeah. This is the next one, definitely. Thankfully to this meat display case, thankfully to the brand, thankful to everything, we survived the pandemic because, again, we had the best of the best with us. And when all the supermarkets were scarce and they didn't have anything, that's where social media kicked in. That's where the community kicked in, letting everyone know I had from any kind of meat you wanted to poultry to anything. That's what also made us survive. The fact that we are a hybrid, the fact that you can either buy something and cook it at home or eat it here. I mean, your pick, but whatever you're going to buy and take home is the same you're going to eat here. So there, so I don't work with anything. I mean, your question earlier, Brian, if, you know, it's the same meat from here that I cook in the back, 
it's the exact same meat. You know, we portion control it every day. But again, if a customer comes in and they want something off on the grill from my meat display, of course we can make that happen. Anything, anyone, they anything anyone wants from the meat display, they want it cooked. Definitely, that's that's it. I mean, mo that that actually makes me happy. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, it's super rare to find someone, you know, again that comes in and say, "Can you do this?" Yes, I can. <laughs> yes. So I. Another one I like to let people know, we custom cut everything. So if you want short ribs, thin, thick, you, you know, however you want them, you're trying to make, um, I can't remember right now, the dish, a Korean dish with the short ribs. Oh, flank and style short ribs. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I can cut them for you. You know, like any, any, any which way form or anything, even if it's not in my meat display case, if you're looking for something I don't have, just give me a day and I'll have it here the next day. Yeah. So that's that's our our mission. That's awesome. You know, a uh, couple more questions before we uh, before we wrap here. Tell us about. So you came up and played in our meat lab uh, in October, and you were asked if there's one thing Diana could cut for you, right? right. And this was in my knowledge. This is like a, we're talking in meat terms. Like we would call this a whole wing, right? It's the rib section. With the, you know, the tomahawk bones still intact, but all the meat on those too, right? Yes, now, correct. Now, in Argentina, what are you doing with that? We cook it whole, and we call it costillar, and we do it in what we call an estaca, or la cruz, which is a iron, like an iron stick that comes out of the floor, like a T, kind of like a cross, and we put the entire, you know, costillar on that and cook it on open fire. So you're talking about eight. 12 hours depending on so when we were talking about rituals earlier and we were talking about getting together imagine that one yeah that's a whole day that's there. a whole day yeah that's a so whole day spent talking mm -hmm. hanging out cracking hanging out you start at like five yeah. six in the morning and absolutely you're done by seven eight you see so it's a whole day yeah. and that's when um when when we did that competition here in Doral you know that's what we were trying to kind of relive for everyone the feel of that open fire cooking in Argentina and getting everyone together and the whole community feeling what again we don't have here we don't you can't go to a park and light a fire here yeah. so it's not like over there over there they could just light a fire in the street and barbecue we can't do that yeah. so again if it's not you know by the fire marshals and a whole event and everything you know that's that's what I'm waiting to come back Hopefully COVID goes away and we get we get that back because that's beautiful. Open fire cooking in front of eight thousand people. All right, Tony Biggs, you listening? This sounds like <laughs> somewhere you need to be. Yes. <laughs> that's that said. Before we wrap, one last important question. This is from Paige's social media bag o tricks. Uh, one thing that we ask every guest that we have: you could choose one steak off the entire beef carcass, and how would you cook it? So basically, what is the official steak dish of Carla Di Lorenzo? Tomahawk steak. I knew she was going to go that one. I have to. I have to. That has been... It's on brand. Yeah. Yeah. You were talking about Chetanita earlier? Yeah, it's on that's, brand. It's that's on what, brand. what she was born with. That's uh, and, and again, the way I explain it, I don't know if you know this one, Brian, that, that steak did not exist in Argentina. That steak did not exist. Tomahawk steak was not a cut you had in Argentina. After grilling the tomahawk steak in front of 8,000 people and the drone catching that image from my grill, yeah. that image made it to Argentina. And three months later, they started cutting their cow different <laughs> just to pull out a tomahawk steak. Yes. So, again, I that steak made me make history. Yeah. So that's what i that's that's i mean what are we here for right to make a difference in this world and one steak and one grill and one image made a difference to an entire country so that to me is also a huge accomplishment to know that something i was cooking and again my my tomahawk recipe was the first published in argentina as well in a cookbook in Argentina was okay. the first um, I remember that. tomahawk recipe I to be published that story. as well. So that's history to me, and that has to be my my. I mean, and again, it's got a bone and the rib. I <laughs> like. I mean, it's the it's an all in one, yeah. 
and you could feed a whole family with it. So, Well, speak for yourself. I'm taking that <laughs> down myself. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I think that's my, that's my go-to. Yeah. And if I have to sh- share with the world, it would have to be the tomahawk steak, definitely. It's beautiful. Excellent. Awesome. Well said. On that note, we are going to let Carla get back to her uh, to her daily duties here. If this is your first time tuning into the Meat Speak podcast, know that you can follow us across all of your major podcasting platforms: Google Play, Apple, Spotify. If you could go over to the Apple uh, icon, that's the little purple guy on your phone. Mm-hmm. Give us a star ranking. Give us a like. Page also says Spotify is now ranking too. So if you have yes. Spotify, if you listen to us on there, you can review there too. Right? Giddy up. Absolutely. Right. That's what. Awesome. Awesome. So that said, uh, on behalf of meat scientist Anna Clark, Chef Tony Biggs, who are actually still up in Ohio where there's at least five inches of snow on the ground. Paige Clayton and I are down here in Miami uh, eating steaks with chimichurri with the great <laughs> Carla DiLorenzo. Carla, Chef, thank you so much no, for joining thank us. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. It's Thanks, a pleasure and a, and a dream come true to be on your podcast. Right. <laughs> but we're going we're gonna to put that in as a review. How about that? Yeah, <laughs> uh, for the Meat Speak podcast, we'll, uh, we'll catch you next time.